I mean, these are hard decisions, and my best guess is, is that on an average home, this bond on an annual basis um, will add approximately $175 to $200 to the tax bill. That's just in my head. I mean, I can figure it out, you know, on, a, on, a, on an 18-year bond. But what you're doing is you're, an, you're annualizing about $960,000 a year, something like that, on a 20-year bond. And uh, that's going to equate to an average two to $250,000 home to about $175 or $200. And I don't think this town is ready for that right now. Hey, the, uh Foreclosure, oh, yeah. 2009 was 22, 2010 was 22, 2011 was 26. <coughs> Foreclosures are going up. No principal amount. And I, I believe that at a pre, uh, recent building and ground meeting, you said that um, poverty in Alton is, is not true. Did you, did you make that statement? No. You didn't say that? That there's no poverty at all? No. Oh. Okay. okay. So do we want to uh, vote on this? No, oh. I, I, I would not have said that poverty was not an issue. We, we do have make free. Some reference to that? We have free and reduced lunch students. Yeah, and you just raised $2,500 for families that can't afford to buy Christmas presents. We give, we give grants for ski program. We, you know. No, I would not have said that. I know, uh, you know, as a parent, you know, one large concern is the safety and security at the school. And the portables, you know, in my opinion, definitely uh, don't fall into that well. You know, now that I believe the school has had to streamline this project quite a bit already, um, but I think a very important part is bringing all the children under the roofs and no longer having them in the portables. You know, right now, if you're, you know, you have a child that's out in one of the portables, has to use the restroom in the wintertime, bad conditions, they're having to come into the building, you know, through that. There are security issues because, you know, both sets of portables are right out near the parking lots. You know, I know they are monitored, but you don't have the staffing of, you know, adults walking the children back and forth um, at all times, you know, I imagine. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, you know, fat getting put into the project, you know, especially once you drop off the additional gym. You know, I think, a, you know, a big part of it does need to be looked at of getting all the children into the same building under the same roof for the security and safety. Has there been any issues with security and safety with the portables? Do we need to wait for that? Pardon me? Do we need to wait for that? No, how long have we had the portables for? Um, I actually don't know. Okay. Probably since the school board voted to have less than average class sizes. We do have smaller class sizes. Yes, we do. And that's never been looked at to see. They're not smaller than the region in many respects. The region isn't paying our taxes. Okay, the average, cl the average class size in the region is somewhere around 21, correct? Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the average. That's, or 19, depending on the age of the student. 19 to 21. What's the average class size in the uh, Alton Central School? I actually have all that data back at the Sorry, office. Yeah, I don't have it with me. No, I want to hear the. I want to hear what they say. Um, well, we break it out by um, grades, which is what the state does. So, do you want to give me a grade or all grades? Yeah, the classrooms divided by the you know the number of kids divided by the classrooms. How, okay. What's what's the average? All right, in grades one and two, the state average is 17.7. Uh, excuse me, in the modular. What grades oh. are there, seven and eight? Uh, right now it's grade four who are out there. Just grade four? Yes. All right, well, what's grade four? What's the, um, uh, what's the uh, average classroom size in the school for grade four? Um, the average, well, you're talking about our smallest group. But anyway, well, the course, average I'm is talking 19. About, wait a minute, I'm talking about the reason it's small is because you get kids in the modular. That's we, why it's small. We, we've done our best to keep I the modulars at the lowest possible I understand. setup or the least mm -hmm. potential risk. Sure. What is? Um, right now, this I'll go through. It's just three numbers. The state average is 19.2. Yep. Alton currently has 16.5. In the? In the 2011 year for grades three and four. 
I no, didn't, no. I I didn't only break out grade, grade okay. three and grade four. Give me grade four. Who's in the modular right now? We have two classes out there with approximately 24 students each. So you got 12? No, no. No, 24, 24 each. 24 in each room, so 48 total. Okay. What's the average for grade four? 24. Right, right now we have 24 per class. 24 in a class. Yes. And what's the uh, state recommendation? <coughs> state recommendation for grade four is? 25. No, no, the state recommendation, it goes from a grade span of three through eight for the state of fewer than 30 students. The Alton District policy for grades three and four is less than or equal to 22 students. Okay, and what would it be if you were um, mandated to take those kids out of the module and put them in the school? Um, 30, right? I'm not sure how I'm not sure how that would make a difference. So maybe I don't understand your question right now. Is there room to move them into the school? No, we we don't have any space in the school. I wish we did. So there's no place to put them. That's where grade. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> well, I I understand, but at the same time, I don't understand because the day after we moved out the entire high school and all the staff we were we were um, overgrown in our elementary school we moved out some modulars you moved out some modulars that, that's when you, you moved, moved into two the modulars the gym okay. parking lots okay. yeah they, they moved got the rid of the classroom out of the modulars oh okay well is there currently any fire suppression systems out in the modulars there's no fire suppression in the building at all anywhere in any part of the building when we did the renovation in 2008 we put in the pipes for a fire suppression system for the future but there are no suppression heads mm -hmm. I understand very much the cost of this I understand very much the economic times I believe, however, that given the fact that we need to do something for this building and we will be able to do it relatively inexpensively because of the cost of the bond and we can wait and wait and wait, but every time we wait, we're doing things that are not in the best interest of children. We don't have any fresh air in this building unless we throw a window wide open, except in some of the windows, areas where the windows don't seem to do much anyway, and then we're losing energy in terms of heat. We don't, we're not able to keep out the heat because we don't have decent windows. We are losing other things. We don't have proper daylighting. We have a lot of glare. We have some places that don't have any windows other than one very small little section. It's, we're in need of a repair for this building. It has a lot of issues. It has a lot of good things to go with it. It has some structural character. I don't want to berate a building that's been built and done some wonderful things. But it, like everything else, it needs a little overhaul. Do you I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Thank you. Do you happen to uh, have information on how many days uh, last winter and the winter before uh, you had the delayed openings as we were waiting for the school uh, roofs to be cleared so that the parents actually, who had jobs had to... Actually, we did not have to delay, but we did have to have the people come shovel starting around 2 o'clock in the morning. So, But that's been part of my bargain with the people who shovel is that they need to get there as soon as possible and our um, custodians need to be there at 4 o'clock in the morning to make sure that they can call me if I need to know that. Why isn't the school board supporting this amendment? Put supporting this warrant article. They do. If they, if the school board supports the warrant article, think they should be here to support it. You're putting me in a very awkward position, why, Steve. Why not? And I, Steve. Yeah. Can you please not put me in that position? But I don't. That's there's not, nobody else here. I understand that, but that's not a position you need to be putting me in. 
Because I, I have a real problem here. I think that they're not here, and tell me if I'm wrong, is because one or two of them are up for election, and they don't want to be put on the record as supporting this article right now. I think it's politics that they're not here. And I want to tell you, I just, tell you, I just always tell you like I see it, okay? Could, but you and I agreed that we had the same goal. Yes. Which is to do what's right in the best interest of the kids. And what you're doing now does not help me nor help you. That's politics. I'd, I'd like to ask a question that's a, it, it's a little off task to this Warren article, but if you entertain and allow me to ask it, mm -hmm. I think I could bring it full circle. I have a question about um, the co-payment on the support staff for their benefits. Is it 30% that they pay? You're talking about the, the health hourly benefits. health insurance? Health yes. insurance? They pay 36.1%. Okay. So in my notes on December 5th, I asked the question and I was told 30%. I called Mark. I asked him what he thought. He thought 30%. And then last year, I had it in my notes, 30%. So I don't understand how we've asked a direct question. And then... I know that fact off the top of my head in the middle of the night. If I was asked that question, I would have said it's 36.1%. It's never changed since I've started here. Okay. If I answered that question incorrectly, it wasn't me, because that is a question okay. I know. And then there's just one other question, and, and I'm going to tell you why I'm asking. Mrs. Holt, we asked about the teachers that were um, at a training in Concord, and your, your reply to me was, no, they were in Manchester. And in the front page of the newspaper tonight, you brought it before the school board about teachers at Krista McAuliffe Museum. That's in Concord. No, 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 no. Krista McAuliffe Technology Conference. That's in Manchester. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The reason I brought those up is because it's... I have a sense that unless we ask the question exactly in the right way. I think I, no, go ahead. I'm and that sometimes I feel like we're not getting the full truth by omission on purpose. And it feels sometimes like manipulation. And so when I read this number, what's, what's really going in through my mind is, is this accurate? What are we going to get hit with after the fact? What aren't they telling us? With the, as far as your health insurance question, I do believe Prospect Mountain has a different percentage. And I think it is 30%. I did work there many years ago, and I do believe they have 30%. Mm -hmm. We have 36.1%. Okay, Just but to clarify I, that. two years I have it in my notes as the Alton Central School, 30%. No, 36%. So that was a concern to me. Thank you. Barbara, I have, promise you I have never tried to hide anything, and the reason is that I, too, am a taxpayer, and I believe it is public information. And my goal is to provide you with everything you can to make a decision. We may disagree. But that is your job. I would like to do it civilly. Well, I, and I feel I'm doing it civilly. I could not just say anything and then, you know, think what I'm thinking. I, I, I prefer to get it out in the open and say it directly to the person that I, I feel I need to say it to. Um, I don't know. I just have such concerns about the economy. And, you know, it's like who's watching out for the guy that's teetering on the brink of bankruptcy, teetering on the, bank of, on the, on the brink of and, and foreclosure. It's, and, and I understand. And I do believe, and that's why I've asked Kathy to double check, I believe that this, does, this slides in with the Prospect Mountain bond. We retire that one. We put this one in. I'm not going to try and tell anyone that this isn't $18 million. It's $18 million, $800,000. But part of the reason that I believe that we do this now is that it doesn't change the tax burden and that it does mean that we get what we need. And it is at a time when the, the mm -hmm. at least now, we were a little panicky when we saw the 5.25% interest rate, that the interest rate is lower and that we can do this. And I understand all that. But then on top of all of that, you know, we have, 
the contract is under negotiation, so I'm worried about that because it's been my experience that they never ever give up anything. There's never been a cut. They don't, you know, 9% um, copay on their health insurance benefits. They have the best benefits in the state. Why wouldn't they want to contribute to that a little bit more to offset some of the taxes, especially since they are begging and screaming and whining and wanting a new building for how many years? I don't understand that, and um, and we have an unsustainable retirement system, you know. So this is like one little fraction of what the taxpayers are looking at for impact to their taxes for the state. I understand, a, and I'm and I'm I doing my best to get what I think is good timing mm -hmm. in the best interest of the students for Alton, not just for this year or next year, but for 20 years out, at a time where when you bond, the families who are going to be here in 20 years, the children who are going through Alton right now, many of whom will be here, will bear this burden as well. Uh, ask the board, we have somebody in the public that want to speak. If sure, sure, absolutely. Public input. You need to come up and speak into the mic. My name is Steve Parker. I'm on the Buildings and Grounds Committee, and 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 I'd like to ask a, I'd like to ask the superintendent a question, maybe the principal, and I think I'm in a much more friendly group than at these Buildings and Grounds meeting where, I, where I'm the only person that really isn't welcome. And what I was wondering, what I was wondering is. And we, we keep talking about this, uh, this, um, the, this, this fresh air problem at, at, at the K-8 school. Well, and what is, why couldn't we put a, put a fan, put, an, put like an attic fan in the ceiling, and then, and, and put a cutout in the side wall and circulate the air? Now, wouldn't that take care of a lot of the problems instead of going through this expenses, expensive, probably, expensive? It probably wouldn't be to code. What? It probably wouldn't be to code to properly ventilate. But it would do the job, though, right? Yeah, but it wouldn't. If it's not the code, it's not doing the job, right? You'd have to. You'd have to find out what the code is on that. Yes, them. Not yeah. us. We don't know that. But it doesn't. That, isn't that a really simple solution? It's, a, it's to put a, put a put a ceiling fan in the ceiling, and cut a hole in the side of the wall, and bring in fresh air, yeah. which for which, every classroom we've never had. For every classroom is what you're suggesting. But the classrooms that don't have fresh air, and all the buildings and grounds meetings are here. Fresh air, fresh air, fresh air. I know. Um, the and we always take the most expensive approach. On it, our family, we have um, some special meetings that we have to have at the school uh, you know, on a regular basis. We've got a child with some special needs. The room that we have that meeting in, uh, there's half the people, that, you know, number-wise that we have here. Within about 10 minutes of that door getting closed, it's you know well over 80 degrees in that room. And, 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 it, and what do you think the problem is? It's in the middle of the building, and there is no outside wall. There is no, no outside wall. To absolutely not. No, the, the the building has some. You know, as a parent. The building has some serious ventilation issues. You can walk from zone to zone, and you and I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, I don't believe you know outside venting. You know the limited number of rooms you know would help uh, too much on that. It was just it was just a thought because you know I you know I, sometimes it's easier to talk in front of this group than the group I'm associated with down there, and uh, it was just a suggestion. Just a, just a suggestion. Thank I, you. Hi. Right, I'm I'm no expert on ventilation um, but I can't imagine how much heat loss there would be with that system I put a ventilation in my shop it As cost me to eight thousand dollars for an air heat exchanger and that's only for two thousand square feet well uh, and, and there was an addition it wasn't done properly single glazed windows no ventilation no storage you know uh, Hi. So that's a that's a. So what do we want to do with the warrant? Shoot. Okay. Is there a motion. Because this is only pre. Yeah. I move we accept the Article Three as presented. Second. Discussion. Yeah. I don't believe that the. Article is being supported by the school board, which is critical. There's no full push to convince the um, budget committee of the um, positive nature of an $18 million plus bond right now. 
There was no architect here to answer the questions. There was no member of the school board who thought that it was important enough to be here to defend that position. I think that all this is is a Trojan horse that was put here as a feeler to see what the appetite was this year, just to get it out and make an announcement and work on it for the next year or two. I think to support this when there is zero state aid, where in the past we've gotten 40 percent state aid. 30. Pardon? 30. 30. Thank you. 30 percent state aid to build a building, right? Um, 30 percent of $18,000. Billion. Um, I'm sorry, of 18 million, 18, million, 18, 18 million dollars. That's nine million dollars, right? That we're missing, which is um, uh, what we got the benefit of in the high school. Am I correct? Well, 18 times. Uh, well, the state aid was not for only covers uh, what new construction. I believe it wouldn't cover any renovation. Well, the state aid is not. It, it, if it, it happened, it would. it's not it, coming back to Alton. Yeah, because what you do is you, what you do is you'd have you'd build a new building for 26, take the take the 30 percent state aid and build it cheaper than renovating. That's a good point. If 18, you know what I mean. It, 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 the, but the state aid is not coming back. Right. To Alton. And, and why is that? What? Okay. They can't afford it. I feel that the taxpayers can't bear the burden because it's not just the construction. Okay. Nope. It's the maintenance <laughs> afterwards that's incorporated. Now we have more classrooms, which means you're going to hire more teachers. We're and not it's hiring just any more grow teachers. just going to grow and grow. Look at what the high school has done. Look at all the issues with the high school. I mean, I can't believe that the cost to maintain that building, it's a brand new building. And, you know, at the meetings I asked, what is going to be the increased cost to maintain it? And I can't address what happened know, at the high school. I wasn't here, nor am I part of that. The director of maintenance at the time said there will be absolutely no impact because it will be a brand new building. That's a falsehood. That's not true. I don't know. I, I do want to, I'd like to address the statement about enrollments, though, because that is something that I do with the budget, and I am very careful about looking at our enrollments and being very honest about how many teachers we need at any time and did recommend the cut of one full-time teacher this year because of enrollment and a half guidance counselor so I just do I, I would want you to know that I would that would continue in the future because we do look carefully at the number of kids every year I mean we're not gonna suddenly have class classes of five or something you know like we do try and look at the state ratios what we've had in the past I'm also you know I'm it is very disappointing that there is not a representative uh, here this evening. Uh, you know, I absolutely agree with that. Um, you know, significant. You know, but at the same time, you know, keeping in mind that with the changes, it's not um, growing the school. It's really relocating and bringing under. There's also a lot of annual maintenance work that the building already needs, and a lot that's been getting put off with the hope of a renovation or a new building. And you know, that's not going to go away no matter how much we don't want to do anything with the school. It's going to get worse and worse every year because it is such an old building with so many problems. You know, the lack of fire suppression system, the lack of ventilation system, the exterior portables that are not plumbed, which is, you know, current regulations. There's a lot of issues with that school. And I think, you know, with the costs, you know, yes, the tax you know, burden exists, but at the same time, interest rates are still low. There is still, you know, labor market, um, you know, cheaper to, build. cheaper to build right now. And next year may not be much, you know, much different. But at the same time, you know, you don't know. You don't know what your demographics are going to be. You don't know what interest rates are going to be. You know, you get a new, you know, policy coming down from the federal government, and it could change interest we rates also significantly. Don't know how many taxpayers can't, wouldn't be able to afford their tax bill, and then, you know, how many unpaid taxes are there? Steve, what do we do? Yeah. S Steve needs to finish his. Go ahead. Can, can, I, oh, sorry, can I just, Steve. I know, Steve, you mentioned that there was no architect. I did ask. He's unavailable. He had, it, it, this was a date that was not in his calendar initially, and he was unavailable. He definitely will be there for the deliberative session, but this was an additional date, and he was not available for this. He's not a one-man firm, is he? No, he's not. No, he's not. No. Um, I'm okay. not sure anyone else knows the project the way he does. Sure. Um, the enrollment 
that you're expecting in 2011-2012 is pretty close to the enrollment of 1987-1988, and it has essentially gone down, you know, gone up and down since then. But what we're talking about is it was this was satisfactory for 541 students in 1987 and 1988, and we had a high school in there, and it's not satisfactory in 2011 and 12 when we have, when we have no high school up there, and it's only an elementary school, which means that classrooms obviously have been turned into teacher's rooms, storage facilities, so, uh, we had a music room, I mean, we had all the ancillary rooms, we had a gym, et cetera, okay? So it has been the choice of the school board to turn it into other areas. You know, if you want to make it a storage room, then you have to know the consequences. Maybe you'll get more students and you're going to have a problem. So there was somewhere between 88 and 2012 and 24 years, somebody made stupid decisions going forward. Anyway, uh, I cannot. I cannot possibly vote for this $18 million um, warrant article, certainly without the support of your own school board. That would be ludicrous, and it's certainly not fair to the uh, voters of the uh, town of Alton. Hey, I'll call the vote. Lawrence Tilly, yes. Mark Decoff, no. Steve Miller, no. Barbara Howard, no. Lauren Kahn, no. I hope people at home realize that we've been doing this for an hour and a half. So this is this is not a, a off the cuff decision. I think we're all having a trying to weigh the we right. know, but there's a it's an important decision, and I think we're all cognizant of the mm -hmm. economy now. And that's and we and we had, and um, <laughs> many of us have attended the um, meetings uh, on the school. Um, you know, so it's not like we, we are not familiar with the situation. Uh, one day. Hey, I'll go to the next one. Yeah. Article 4, should Article 3 be adopted, shall the Alton School District raise and appropriate the sum of $1,750,000 and no cents to add geothermal heating and cooling to Alton Central School, including equipment installation, professional services, site development fees, and any other incidentals to and or necessary for said heating and cooling system to authorize the issuance of not more than $1,750,000 no cents of bonds and notes in accordance with the provision of the Municipal Finance Act and authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon and further raise and appropriate an additional sum of which I apologize. I had contacted the bond bank early this morning to get a rate or to get a, a debt schedule to be able to put that in, and I did not hear back from okay. her, so I apologize. So, what do you table this one? I move. Oh, oh, you want to move? Well, I mean, if we turn down the first one. Right, it's going to turn down. All right. So, you move. Go. Article 4 is read. Presented. Second. Uh, discussion. I'm not going to uh, make this. You know, I'm not going to take up too much time on this one, but do you have the um, uh, the data for the payback period for uh, you know for the investment, uh, you know for what what the ongoing costs are over a 20-year period? I mean, what you're doing is you're showing us a Warren article and expecting us to vote on it with zero information on geothermal. Some of us may not even be able to spell geothermal. I have two articles on geothermal. The specific... Oh, that pertain to, that pertain to this article? Yes. Um, the actual um, projections for this building um, have not been done straight out. The reason being that the initial projections were for the entire building, and then we took off the gym. The other piece is that until we really know what we're going to be able to save on the windows, what we, you know, save an energy cost for the windows, we can only guesstimate at what we would get for total savings. However, 
The other part to projecting out the costs and the savings would be looking at what you anticipate the cost for um, heating fuel would be. However, uh, on the other side of that is when um, studies have been done, a seven to 14 year payback, seven years if the um, fuel oil stays the way it's been going with a fairly hefty increase um, each year, which we've been seeing for the last few years, although it did dip down two years ago, was it? The price dipped down, I think, a couple of years ago. The oil, was that when it was? Yes. Yeah. But that's the anticipated, if oil stays stagnant or drops, then you can anticipate a little bit longer. But I do have two articles, if anyone is interested. The difference, of course, I think, um, that we are not using a straight heat pump. We're using um, the compressor type exchange, and that this article does explain that. It's straight from Wikipedia. Be in seeing that, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I do have just a geothermal, how a geothermal energy ex works. But the, there are numerous systems, and then there are numerous ways that you build your wells. And right at the moment, we're looking at the compressor system that kind of works the way your refrigerator does. You go in, you take up the energy, store it, run a compressor, and use that system afterwards. It's more efficient than the old heat pumps that used to be used probably 15 years ago. Um, and all I can say is I live in an earth-bermed house, and I make use of that uh, energy saved by kind of having space below ground. And um, it's worked very well for our heat bills and our cooling bills. We did actually, even though we have an air conditioner, we never put it in last summer. I, I, am, I am personally insulted with the lack of information on a 1.7 and a one and three quarter million dollar warrant article that we are being given to make that to make that decision when you're talking about a seven to 14 year payback you're talking about a coefficient of determination that's outside any statistical um, probability acceptability scope okay um, to there is zero information on the cost, other than it's one and three quarter million dollars. Zero information on the efficiency, other than a couple of articles. I'm assuming that it's just the generic articles, not written towards this specific unit. You know that's going in here, and I'm insulted that you're asking me to vote on this. I think the voters should be insulted. You're asking them to vote on this without any information whatsoever. If I was a voter, I'd, I'd walk up to it. I just put an X through the whole thing when I got to the when I got to the vote when I got to the voting booth. I said, "What does this mean?" You know, you might as well say, "I want a one point, I want two million dollar generator. I think we need it." Okay, and again, there's nobody, and obviously uh, the school board didn't think enough of, you know, this Warren article to present enough evidence to try to convince us any other way, unless they automatically assume that we weren't going to um, accept the $18 million in the first place, so why care about the million three quarters? That's how I feel about it. I had the opportunity to talk to a recent uh, master's degree, um, master's graduate from um, the architectural school down in Boston, and I asked him, you know, I said, what do you think about a school putting in geothermal? And he said, can they afford that? First thing, he said, I studied geothermal. That was one of his, his uh, focuses uh, in his studies. And he said, everything that he's read, it's typically done by um, you know, your, your large corporations that have lots of money um, to do that kind of thing. So I, I explained to him that the other school up in uh, Wolfboro had done it. And uh, again, he was just very surprised. So um, we did talk a little bit about it. Um, he feels that it's um, it's a it's a high cost up front for the length of time it's going to take you to recoup and benefit from it. Did he say so, what the recoup time was? 
well, he, I couldn't give him any specifics on the size of the school and, and how many wells. He was asking me all kinds of questions, and I said, can't give you that information. So, but as a generalized thing, but his knee-jerk reaction was, oh my gosh, how can you afford that? So, and again, you know, I hate to beat a dead horse, but it really is first priority to me is the my concern for affordability to the taxpayers. So. All right, ready to call the vote? Um, just real quick, you know, on discussion, it would be much easier to decide, you know, seven and 14 years is a really mm -hmm. large range. And, you know, we do know that there was the other schools that have used the system. You know, if they had any information that they could have provided on how much they were saving per year. Right know. now, Governor Wentworth is seeing a 40% savings in their energy costs. And that's directly to the geothermal? Yes. Do you think their um, the budget committee got more information than we did? Just, um, but that's a <laughs> How are they going to know? That's a rhetorical question. I don't, doesn't require an answer. All right, take the vote. Lawrence Tilly, no. Mark Decoff, no. Steve Miller, no. Barbara Howard, no. Lauren Kahn, no. All right, so we don't have, we already did Article 5. We don't have the contract. Five, six. What was the vote on Article 5? Article 5 was five no's, two yeses. So Article 6 is the uh, operating budget, which isn't there yet. Wait a minute. Article 6. Um, this this doesn't make thermal, sense. Right? Yeah, and that one's, if that one fails. This one, but we still have to. We already did that one. Okay. We did that one last, last meeting. Thank you. What was the vote last meeting? Five, no, two, yes. Thank I'm you. sorry, for which one? The, uh, the huh? Article six. Uh, it, article five was uh, for $50,000 if uh, article four didn't, was defeated. And the vote was what? Five, no. Two to five. Two five, to no, five. two, yes. Thank you, I'm sorry. <laughs> so article six, we don't have the final number. Article seven, we don't have anything there. Article 8, nothing there. Article 9 was seven yeses. Article 10, I think we tabled Article, we tabled Article 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So do you want to look at those now? So Article 10, in the event that Article 3 is defeated to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $150,000 and no cents to be added to the existing building and grounds expandable trust 31108 under RSA 19, 198.20-C for the purpose of building, repairing, and maintaining school facilities. This warrant article to be void and have no effect if Article 3 is approved by the voters. I move Article 10 as presented. Second. Anybody speak to the article? I think most of the follow-up articles are all for things that are required at the school if we don't move forward with the renovation repair work. These are articles These are that are always work. there to keep adding to your funds. Trust funds. Yes. But there's nobody from the school board to speak to it. School board. As, you, as usual, I have a problem with the building, repairing, and maintaining. I think that's three different, mm -hmm. three different purposes. But I guess I'm the lone wolf crying. In no, the, you're not. I agree. No, I agree, I agree with, with you 100 percent. We agree with you because it blurs the um, the understanding of where the money is going. Because sometimes it's under building, sometimes it's under repair, sometimes it's, it's maintenance. When you know, if you're building and repairing, you're maintaining. So it's. Hey, I, I have a qu let me have a, a question to the representative. Let's assume, hypothetically speaking, the $18 million warrant article is defeated by the voters. What assurances do we have? that this $150,000 will ever be spent 
until you, year after year after year, keep on coming back for the $18 million school, and all you're doing is building this up to apply this against that big number. In other words, I would seriously consider voting yes to this $150,000 if the $18 million bond issue was defeated, the renovation was defeated, and yes, you will go ahead and do this. We need to repair. Um, actually, we've got two repairs that we've got to do. Well, one, I think, is just an exhaust fan, but we've got one roof that's already leaking right now. The building needs work. We've been hoping that we will get the building renovation done. Mm -hmm. There's only so many times that we can hope, and then we have to do something. The problem is that if we do certain things, mm -hmm. we don't want to then rip it apart later. Mm -hmm. Fixing the 1956 wing, putting on a new roof, and then getting a renovation in three years and ripping that roof off is a waste of taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why we have hung on to certain things mm -hmm. and not wanted to have a trust that limited us from repairing or building so that we couldn't, if we had dollars left, reduce the taxpayer's burden on a bond. We have used monies, as you know, to do work on these buildings. We have done the middle school bathrooms, which were mm -hmm. atrocious. We have replaced windows in the wing that we knew we were not going to do any additional work. We are trying to do repairs and maintenance mm -hmm. to that building in the most logical fashion so that we are not wasting taxpayer dollars. That's our goal, okay. to do what we can do what is best for the students, mm -hmm without doing something twice and spending money irrationally, foolishly, and against what would make sense for and anybody's I pocket. You. I agree with you 100%. There's no doubt in my mind that this work needs to be done. We have warrant articles here that total about $360,000, okay? Now, a bond issue would be approximately $960,000 a year. This is 30% of the bond issue, okay? I'd be happy to vote for these items in a heartbeat, right? But not if we're putting it off year after year after year, we're only going to fix something when it explodes or entirely breaks, for instance, because one day we're going to renovate the school. Because I don't know if it's this year, next year, or 10 years from now. And my idea, my idea of renovating the school is not to build these five trusts up right, until they're equal to uh, the bond issue, yeah. okay? And oh. that's, what, that's what you're asking to, us to do without an insurance that if the bond issue fails, you're going to go forward and use this money. The roof over what we call the ERC, the elementary section, mm -hmm. is going to need to be fixed soon. What's, what's soon? Is that next year or five years from now? Probably within the next three or four years. So it could be four years from now. Okay, uh, I understand. Okay. That's going to be done. Okay. That will not impact what else needs to be, that, that section that we're going to rip apart. Okay. So that will be done. The question is how much do we, if we don't do geothermal, then there will be ventilation that's going to be in that roof. So again, you put on a roof, you put, Later on, you put holes in it, which is different from you put the holes in it and then you put on the roof. I understand 100%. So, I understand the, the conundrum. I, I understand it. Unfortunately, there's nobody here who votes on whether to, ex that, who so, votes yes. to expand understand. this trust to tell me that if we put the money in here, it's going to be used, or are we just building up bank accounts? No. The goal is to make sure we have enough money to do the repairs that we need to do, and that's the issue. We have, we have issues that have to be done. We have windows that really should be replaced, 
and we have not replaced the windows in the media center because of the way we were doing some planning. If you look at the new um, revision, the media center now, mm -hmm. which initially we had thought was going to have a different design, that media center now has a design that's a little bit different. Those windows can be replaced. So those are things that we now know we can do. Will you do it? I can't answer that that's, right now. That's my point. That's, that's, the, that's right. my only point. That's my only point. Those will be a recommendation. Here, yeah. There's nobody here to, to tell me with authority that that is what the intent is, because I will vote for this in a heartbeat, okay? And if it was more money, I'd probably vote for that, too, as long as it was going to be expended. But if it's just going to be put into a kitty, Right? I'm not going to ask the... The, the windows yeah. are an energy-saving thing that can be done without being ripped out. Are they going to be... Can, can you tell me it's got, they're going to... If we put them... Are you going to use it the next year or four years from now? We can't take the money out of the trust... Right. ...without a public hearing. I understand. So... Uh, but we're just putting money in the, in the trust until the school board, wherever they are, decides... You know, well, shall we do it in years one, two, three, or four? Because I think in two years, the economy is going to get better. I think we can put the bond through. Or I think in three years, the economy is going to get better. I think I can put the bond through. I, if that's the calculus, right, I don't want to listen to that. I want to, somebody has to make a decision and take a stand. And I haven't made that decision in terms of a recommendation to the board at this point. Okay. Thank you. All right. Call the vote. So, oh, you want to say something? So, I can't this is, I mean, we've all just been thrown under the bus. It's like. We've, this is the same articles that come up every year. Yeah. yeah. With it an doesn't come intent up with an to assure that the building so has it. the uh, appropriate but, funding to yeah. do what we need to do. They don't spend it because not, they're yeah. waiting for the, the renovation. And not I don't know how long they're willing to wait. I need somebody sitting in that chair where they belong to tell me that, is, that we're going to try and pass it this year, we're going to make a full push, or we're going to make a full push next year, or the year after, right? Just to touch on the windows, like you mentioned, there's currently, according to the, uh, um, the 18 million article, there's currently about 31,000 in the window fund, mm -hmm. you know, and we've got another one here asking for 44. And, you know, I agree that if, you know, if it doesn't pass, you, you know, could we get a line drawn in the sand to find out, based on what's not going to be on the renovation plan, what will they move forward with working on? They, it was there last year, 31, and they still didn't do it. Mm -hmm. It was there. They could have oh, done I know there's 31 in there last right, year. Right. They could have done more than one window mm -hmm. last year. They chose not to do it. They're not spending the money because they want the renovation to go through, but they're not here to support okay. it. I understand Let from me, uh, some can, of it because can, they didn't have a plan. Now that they have a plan and they know what is and is not going to be touched, mm -hmm. you know, they, I think we can expect and hope for a more intelligent decision on what can be spent but, now. I agree. But okay, again, I no think I can give it. a little bit better idea. The plan for the roof repairs, the repair to the sixth grade wing and the 1988 peaked roofs, we've got money set aside for that. Okay. And our plan at this point is that the money gets set aside through two. Okay, could you, I'm sorry, I was distracted. Um, so was I. No, no it was. I was so, so we've uh, tried to put money aside for 2012. We'd like to do it again in 2013. The goal would then be to repair that roof if we don't have a bond to repair that roof at the following year when that money is available. Okay. So we do have some of these plans. Um, Let's go over just one by one. The article that we're looking at right now, there's, there's what, 30, um, there's, how much is in that? Um, trust right now. Do you have that or do I have 44,066. I've got that. Hang on. It's on the Article 3. Yeah, yeah. It's on What's Article okay. 3, Steve. I know. Mm -hmm. I know it. I'm going to hear it for the record. Okay. Okay? Yep. Sorry. How much is it? Thank you. Which, is, which one are you asking? Okay. For the, for, uh, uh, we're on what? Article 10? Uh, yep. I'm going to help 10. my able assistant here. Okay. okay. How much is in there at this moment? We'll get it back. It's the... Uh, Existing building in the ground expendable okay. trust created on 31108. 
Uh, and just, just for the record, you know, um, the, re the reason I, I ask a rhetorical question is to get it into the record so the people who are looking at this tape and reading the minutes understand the rationale behind it. That's all. Okay? okay? Yep. Okay. You said the Buildings and Grounds Expendable Trust? Yep. Yeah. Did you? Yep. $440,666.06. Okay. And how much of that was expended last year? $66,741. Okay. Okay. And my assumption is the balance was not expended. Correct. Because either one, we didn't have anything to fix, which is probably not true, or we're going to wait until we see if the bond passes, correct? Uh, last year we expended from other trust funds uh, as well. No, so th was, this one here. Yeah, There's know, only two saying. reasons why you don't fix something, right? If you have the money, right? Either it doesn't have to be fixed, okay, or you, in this particular case, you're waiting for whether or not the bond will pass. If the bond doesn't pass, how much of that trust fund will be expended to fix the school this year, coming year? Again, we're trying not to do something that we would end up ripping out. Okay. You can't, you can't I understand. You can't tell me. I, well, I, I think that's a good answer, that they're not yes. going to spend money and then rip Twice. it out next year. That, I, I'm satisfied with that answer. Okay. I mean, there are things that we have done and will continue to do, such as we can do certain roofs that will not be affected. Okay. But to do a roof that will be potentially ripped out in I'm, four or five years makes no sense to me. I am a fiscal conservative. I've I, been I called understand. cheap. I you, prefer fiscal conservative. And but I, <laughs> I don't want to do something twice. Great. And that's the reason why it does make sense to keep putting more money in there. Because if you're it not going to. It makes perfect sense to me. I don't know how you run your household, mm -hmm. but right now I have a car that works, it drives beautifully. Some people wonder why I drive a seven year old car. I will continue to drive a seven-year-old car. In the meantime, I put money aside every single paycheck to be available for my next it's car. Because <laughs> I'm going to buy my next car cash. That's, great. That, that's called a bond. When you're buying your next car and it happens to be a school, it's called a bond. But you could put money aside. We're not paying cash for the school. There We're, are many schools that pay money into trust funds so that they have set aside and kept the tax rate level so that they have money set aside and they reduce the cost of the bond. Okay. The, I have a question. The roof that's leaking right now, would that be one of the roofs that could be repaired if the Article oh. 3 doesn't pass? No. But we will repair that leak. But this is right at the section, right at the section where that will be. Is it possible that it's leaking because they've been up there shoveling and they've damaged shingles or anything? No. No. And actually, that's an emergency repair. We're going to have to repair that repair no matter that. what happens. We're repairing the leak, but that section is going to be coming down. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and again, you know, we'll do everything we need to make this the best learning environment for the kids at this point. But I wasn't going to, you know, in the past, that library media section was going to be added on to with a whole different section. So those windows were going to come out as part of the renovation. Now, that's not where the renovation is going to be. Those library media windows can be proposed mm -hmm. as a, just put in new windows the way we've done before. So that's, those are the kinds of things that I think make sense to do over time. The bathrooms in the ERC, have a lot of work to be done. The reason that we haven't done them is that there's the mechanicals that are going to go in when we do the renovation. Right. Can we do them? Yes. Does it make sense to do them until we have the whole plan in place? We just, we're trying to do this in a logical fashion. But certain things can be done. That sixth grade wing and the 88 wing roof, we have a plan for that. Um, Any price on that? We had a price for that roof. I think um, I'd have to look because we we set aside money last year in the roof, and then we're um, we set aside one hundred thirty-five thousand last and year. And we've budgeted some money, forty thousand for the next two years for that, and then some money also for the um, damaged roof rafters. So we're putting money aside to do that section as well. Eighty. If we need to. Eighty and one hundred thirty-five. <coughs> no, 40. You 
put 135. Last year. And 80. So don't you think 440 is enough? Get in there now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite a lot of money. You got 440 in there now. That's my point. Thank you. I thought the roofs were separate. They are. Well, separate it doesn't matter. Off. This is building, repair, and maintenance. You can mm -hmm. use that for anything. Sure. Yeah. We could. <laughs> we also could use it for the windows, which right. we can use it for. Yeah, it's for anything. Yeah, they, of course, the first, thing, the first thing that came up, you know, the first year this came, I had the problem with a building pat, and I asked mm -hmm. the, um, the attorney if that could include plans, because Gilmanton went ahead with plans for school, mm -hmm. and then the voters turned it down, and it never went anywhere. So there was a lot of money spent drawing up plans and everything else. Mm -hmm. And the architect said, yeah, uh, the um, attorney said, yeah, that can be done. So that's why I've always had a problem with this. I don't want the school board to hire an architect, draw up a whole bunch of plans, and then the voters turn it down. That's why I've always had trouble with that building part in this article. It does give them the authority to do that, and I've always been concerned about that. So All right. that's why. I'm ready to call the vote? Mm -hmm. We'll start over there. Lauren Kahn, no. Can you come back to me, please? Steve Mullen, no. Mark D. Koff, yes. Lawrence Tilly, yes. Should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good thing they to have do. Do you have a coin? Barbara Howard, no. Oh, this is hard. I gotta use the pencils. Okay, can we, we're gonna take a five minute break. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. That's the problem. Steve, we're going to start. He does his good. <laughs> oh, he does a great job. All right, call the uh, Alton Budget Committee. 